um, if you if you stay on your video, I can see you, and then I can, um, you know, I can tell if you have any questions or if something is not, if I'm not saying something clearly, and, you know, so I can I can see you move if you have it on, but then you, you get recorded, so it's a it's a toss up. Um, you can always toggle it off and on if you want to keep it off, and then if you have a question, turn it on. Um, that's fine too. Um, is that making sense? So, um, so I'm just going to get started, and I thought this little series of um, four classes we do sort of stuff you can do around the house. Um, you know, not just you know yoga at home, like because we don't want to go out. Um, not just you know what we're doing because of the virus, but what you can be doing like during the day. And because I find I found that my um, I'm doing yoga sort of throughout the day more often than I'm doing like an hour sitting down doing yoga. And um, so we're gonna we're gonna sort of focus on that today. What you can how you can incorporate yoga into your sort of normal routine, even though nothing's really normal these days. <laughs> So let's go ahead and get started. You gotta come to the, we're gonna start seated and you're gonna come to the edge of your chair. And uh, just have your sit bones nice and even. You might wanna wiggle around a little bit. <clears throat> Feel that pressure on your sit bones. Notice where your knees are. If they're higher than your hips, which mine are right now, um, you wanna put something, I don't, I'm gonna put a mat under there. Um, you wanna put something underneath and Raise it up a little bit. I'm gonna raise that up. I didn't know that chair was so low. So you can use a mat, you can use a blanket, you can use a towel. And I just fold up a mat and stick it in there. And you don't want your knees higher than your hips. You actually want them like right at your hip height or um no, so now my now my hips and my knees are aligned. If you're legs are shorter and you don't have your, your knees are way far down. You can put like blocks underneath your feet. <clears throat> and that will bring them up. Let's see how that brings them up too high for me. So um, you can put a towel in there. You want to have that alignment with your legs. So just check and see where your, where your knees are in relation to your hips as they're, as we're seated here and then Put your focus into your feet. Just feel them on the floor or on the mat. A little pressure in the feet. Not so much if you have that toe curl thing, your toes curl. And if you do have that, you can also use a block to put your foot on and have the, just put it on sort of from the arch back. That might relieve a little pressure and, and keep your, keep that dystonia from happening in your feet. So let's go ahead and notice where, where, how our feet are feeling. If you need that block or if there's anything, if you can wiggle your toes, whatever toes wiggle, wiggle them. And then bring your attention to your, to your hips. <clears throat> if, you, if you can sort of focus on it, you can get that, this sort of tells the brain to get your attention on time. So you can tap from your ankles up your calves to your hips. And sort of tell the brain, okay, we're focusing on the hips now. And then bring your attention to where they are, even sort of across the top, the sort of ledges of the hips. And see if you can notice if they're even. You know, dig in there, you can, you'll, you'll find them. And then if they aren't, so you can wiggle around and get them even. And then notice the front part where the bone, little bones are that, that go forward. So your hips are sort of like this. Um, hushed. So your hips are like, you know, this, um, like a ball. That's sort of where my index fingers are. That's where you sort of feeling for those bony parts too. Because sometimes it'll happen, it'll be, one will be turned in or you know, sort of tucked under. You hear people say, you know, you have one leg longer than the other. It's actually, not true. What's happening is the hip is holding it, you know, it would be a muscle like holding it tight and it makes it seem like it's longer. That's what we're checking. We're just sort of doing inventory to see if we've got anything like that going on. I often do. So 
um, I have my, my stronger leg because then I'm, I'm using it more, it tends to go in. And so with, what we can do is notice that and there's ways we can sort of get them back even again. So we're just taking inventory right now. And then go ahead and look at, see if you can feel those bones in the back and just see if, it, if they feel level. We're just checking out where they are. And go ahead and take hold of the side of your chair and just let those knees flop from side to side. And let those hips loosen up a little bit. So the good thing about doing yoga is sort of in, in little bits throughout the day, throughout the house, you cover every body part that needs stretching out. So it's kind of a bonus. And let that go ahead and come, come back, come back to stillness. And let's focus on sitting those sit bones really firmly into the chair and then lift up out of your spine. So nice long spine. And if your shoulders popped up, let them drop away from your ears. Let your hands just rest on your lap. We're gonna start with a breath just to notice where we're at. And when you, when you breathe in, if you can breathe in through the nose, I know it's allergies, a lot of pollen out there. But if you're not stuffed up, you can breathe in through your nose. Start there and let that air go all the way down to the base of your lungs. So notice as you're breathing in, how your, your chest is gonna to start to fill up. Don't stop there. Send it down, all the way down to the base of your lungs. And feel, your, feel your ribs expanding in the front and in the back. I really feel mine because I um, fractured a few uh, a week or so ago. So there may be a few stretches I don't do. I may walk you through those. Um, you can really feel the, the muscles between your, between your ribs. When you really no, focus, focus on that expansion as you're inhaling. And when you exhale, it collapses back down. Let's just do a cycle of breath and notice that expanding and relaxing. And now we're going to take our hands and we're going to reach out. And on the inhale, let them come up to maybe shoulder height. If your shoulders crept up, let them fall away from your ears. Again, we're just having our arms out. And on the next inhale, turn one palm up. And then on the exhale, switch. So we're gonna do that again. Inhale, switch. And exhale. And let them come back down. And circle those shoulders, big exaggerated circles. Up and see if you can reach your earlobes and then back and around. And then we're gonna reverse that. We're gonna come up from behind. So squeeze your shoulder blades together and come up and forward. Nice, nice big circles. Ah, let that go. We're gonna work a little bit on the shoulders now. Let's just let one arm drop down and just let it swing. We're just like letting it sort of flow by itself. We're not giving a lot of effort in it. We're just getting the fluids warmed up in there. And let that go. Let's go ahead and switch that to the other arm. Let that go. And on inhale, then reach one arm up. Reach up through the fingertips and then we're gonna reach back around. If there's any pain in reaching around, just come down. And as you come back around, we're gonna do one, another circle. Your whole body can turn as you're reaching back. And then we're gonna come forward across our chest. And then turn your palm up and switch forward across your chest again and all the way back. A little dance move there. Let's do it one more time with the same arm. We're going to reach up. Let your whole body reach back. Exhale as you bring that arm around behind. We're going to inhale and sweep it across. And then turn your palm up and sweep it across again. Now let's go ahead and switch arms. Sometimes we reach up on an inhale. And exhale, your whole body turn as you're reaching back and then we're gonna come up 
Inhale across your chest. Turn that palm up and sweep it across the other way. Let's do that again. Sweep it around. And then we're going to come forward. Turn that palm up and sweep it away. One more time. Up and back. And then across. Palm up and across again. That gets the whole body moving. Let's circle one shoulder and notice how it feels. Notice how that feels in your the shoulder socket as well as the shoulder blade. Just notice what's moving or what might be stuck. And go the other way. And switch that over to the other side. See, I'm noticing that they're moving fine, but when I do the left one, they get a little, little zing in my neck. So there's something stuck there. So this is just this is good. This is good. It's telling me what, what to work on. <sighs> Let's do a little more with shoulders and we'll work up at the neck. So we're going to reach out. Reach out like you're pushing air away. We'll just reach out. Poof. We're going to push the other way across your body. Forward and across your body. And now we're going to just notice the difference between that and it sort of looks like the same way, but we're going to pull in. And let that go. Let's switch over to the other side. So we're going to reach out first. And then we're going to pull in. Excellent. Let's do some fireworks with our fingers. Everyone's got mixed feelings about fireworks. I don't like them because my dog doesn't like them. She gets very nervous and goes into the bathroom and hides in the shower. So. Now let's go for our nice quiet fireworks. Put those fingers and shake it out. And let that let that settle for a moment and just notice what's going on. Hmm. Let's raise our arms up again and reach out. We're going to turn the palms to face each other. And then open up nice and wide. And we're going to bring them up on an inhale. And then a big exhale to whoosh down. Let's do that again. Reach out. Palms are facing down. If your shoulders crept up, let them drop away from your ears. And turn your palms to face each other. And an inhale, we're going to sweep them open. And then up. Big exhale. Whoosh. How's that feeling? Okay, let's do a little bit with our neck. We're just warming up. So we're going to sit nice and tall. And then the only thing that's moving is your back of your neck. You just drop your chin down to your chest on an exhale. And notice if you feel the stretching or the, the any tension in the neck. Is one side different than the other? Just let your chin drift up towards your right shoulder. And then back down, and then let it drift up towards your left shoulder. And back down. And then come on back up to center. Let's go ahead and reach our arms out again. And this time we're going to inhale them up. And when we exhale down, you're just going to sweep them down. It's wherever they reach to towards the floor. So exhale down. Ah. And then we curl back up. A little more for the neck, and then we'll. This is a great. I, I've said this before, but for anyone who missed this, this is a great one to do before you get in. If you're still driving before you get in the car, um, it's a great one to do because it helps you turn and look behind you. So let's just turn and look over one shoulder. And just notice where you, where you get to, how far you can see back. And bring that back to center. Now we're going to take that same arm and reach out. And follow. You reach your fingers, sweep your fingers around towards the back. Follow it with your gaze. Wherever you get to is fine. And then you're going to swing it back to the front. And let that hand come down. And then look over that same shoulder again and see if you got any further. Works every time. 
So let's turn and look over your left shoulder. And then come back to center and let your left hand come up. And follow your gaze as you sweep your fingers behind to the back. And then back to the front. Let that arm come down and then look over the left shoulder. <sighs> How does that feel? I like this. Yes, the shoulders helps me like settle down sometimes. So let's go ahead and, and work our way down this down the spine. We're gonna do some cats and cats and dogs. So have your hands on your lap or sit nice and tall. Take a breath in, and then when you exhale, start to round your back from the middle of your back. So we're not gonna drop our chin yet. We're just gonna sort of push the middle of your back towards the back of your chair. And then let that let that round up your spine so that you feel your ribs sort of separating from each other. And then your shoulder blades are separating. And you're gonna round that back and you, then you can round your shoulders and drop your chin. And imagine you're a Halloween cat, you're just rounding it. Let that exhale through those vertebrae in the back of your spine. And then inhale, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna come forward to bring our belly forward. And then your ribs open up and then your collarbones open up. And your shoulders, squeeze those shoulder blades together and have a look up, sort of where the wall and the ceiling meet. And then we're, that was a big inhale and then we're gonna exhale and round it again. And then we're gonna inhale and come back up. And arch that back. And then we're going to come to center and bring your fingertips to your shoulders and let your elbows reach out. We're just going to do some twisting. Let your elbows just sort of sweep from side to side. And let that stop for a moment and notice the difference between sort of sweeping your elbow back, leading with your elbow and leaning with your with your torso. So lean, like keep your elbows reaching out, really reach out to your elbows, feel that lengthening and underside of your arm, and then go ahead and turn from the, from the tailbone. So let your hips sort of do the work turning. And once you've turned, then press that elbow that's behind you, press it back a little more. And then come back to center and let's do the other side. So we're gonna Instead of reaching the elbow back, we're reaching the elbows out. And we're, gonna, we're gonna turn at the tailbone and the hip. So go ahead and turn to the other side and let that elbow press back. And come back to center. Let those arms come down, circle the shoulders. We're gonna do some Final roll. So you want to separate your feet sort of mat width apart. You want to just going to flop down like a rag doll, um, forward, forward bending and stretching out the spine. And inhale to sit nice and tall and then exhale you're just going to flop down like a rag doll down the floor let your arms be loose and your head is loose and just hang there. And then inhale we're going to slowly come back up. Imagine you're stacking each vertebra at a time as you're coming up. <sighs> so any of these warm-ups can be done at on the side of your bed, you know, when you're as you're getting up in the morning or um, before you go to bed at night, and especially the cats and dogs. Um, you can do it in a chair. <clears throat> Turn the TV off just for, you know, a little while and do a little, even five minutes of yoga is good. <clears throat> so a couple other things we can do. Um, I'm gonna do some standing and a lot of the things we use the chair for are for support. You can use a countertop, whether it's in the bathroom or in the kitchen. So um, those are those are really waiting for your you know the water to boil or your coffee to 
or the microwave to ding. So there's all sorts of things we can do while we're around the house. Go ahead and come to the front edge of our chair again. So we're gonna stick, we're gonna reach one leg out. I'm gonna start with my right. Reach out through the heel and lift up out of the hips. And then we're gonna, you can hold on to the chair for support. We're gonna reach our heart toward our knee. So nice deep breath in and then exhale. And then on an inhale, we're gonna lengthen. You're inhaling as you're reaching your heart down toward your knee. And then we're gonna come back up. So you wanna to get to a spot where you feel that lengthening in the inner side of your leg. It should sort of be the middle third of your leg, sort of the, you know, from the middle of the calf up through the middle of the hamstring. If you're feeling it up close to the chair, sit back up again and readjust because you don't want to feel it that far up. You want to, that's, that you want to feel it about halfway up the thigh, in the back of the thigh. And you want to get to the point where it's just sort of going, ooh. So if you go to ooh, it's gonna, it's not good. That could cause spasms and and we don't want that. So we're gonna lift up again. Nice big inhale. And just really bring your awareness to the underside of that leg, where the stretch is and how intense it is. And just you can you can find where the intensity is, but back away from it. You can you can so you can go to ooh, but then come out of it, you know, inhale up a little from it. So that way you know where it is. You just want that little bit of ooh, and on an exhale, see if you can settle into that. And really lengthen, feel it lengthening. And you can come up a little bit on an inhale and then go back down a little bit. And then take your opposite hand, your left hand, and reach towards your ankle. And then we're going to come back up. And bend that. Knee, and we're gonna lift that up and go ahead and circle the ankle at the ankle. Get that. We forget about our ankle sometimes. And let's let that go. Let's just kick out the left leg. Or, or the other side if you start with the left. And you're gonna reach out through that heel and lift up out of the out of your hips. Make sure you those pointy parts of your hips, the pointy parts in front are facing. Sometimes they might be turned. You know, make sure your hips and your shoulders are, are lined up here. And you, and you didn't sort of stick one leg forward. So we're gonna lift up out of our hips. Exhale our heart towards your knee. And again, you're looking for that, that sensation of lengthening. And then go ahead and come up on an inhale. Let's do that again. Lift up out of your hips and then we're going to hinge forward. And notice where that ooh is. You can come up a little bit on an inhale and then exhale down and see if you can go a little further if the ooh moved. And then you can reach your opposite hand towards the ankle. And come on back up and bend that knee. Go ahead and circle that ankle. And let that go. Let's get our knees in here a little bit. Shoulders and knees are the cranky joints. So let's, let's look for one leg and just go ahead and swing that. You're not kicking out so much as just swinging it. And just let it swing a little bit. And let the other side have a turn. And let that go. Now we're gonna hold on to the chair and you wanna be at the edge of the chair. We're just gonna, we're gonna kick out like one leg and then bring it back. And you're gonna kick out the other leg and bring it back. And then we're gonna kick out both. And bring them back. This is actually working more on the core. So we're gonna take one leg out and back and then I'm going to kick the other one out and back. And then we're going to do both. And let that go. 
<sighs> Let's take a breath in and out and just notice where things are at. If you're feeling any of that stretching happening, if you're feeling warmed up. I'm just going to put our hands on our hips. We're going to do some circles. So we're going to exhale as we come forward and inhale all the way around back. Exhale forward, inhale. And then go the other direction. And let that go. If you have a book or a block, um, you know, something that you can sort of hold in your hands, a strap, a, a shoe, um, it's something that it holds your, that you can hold that's, you know, about the size of your, it isn't wider than your shoulders. So you just want to hold on to something. Or you can, it could be a ball, you can be your cat, <laughs> maybe not your cat. And, uh. That uh, seems to be a box of macaroni and cheese. Um, you don't want it too heavy. You need to just look in it. What you got around the house. You just want to hold it out. And then you're going to reach, 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 reach. And then we're going to inhale. We're going to come back. And it's so like you're rowing. So you're going to pull it all the way to your chest and lean back a little bit. Feel those abs working and then we're gonna roll forward and reach and, and if you think you all the way reach you can reach a little more and see if the shoulder blades will let go a little bit and let those arms reach out a little more and then inhale come on back and pull that up whatever you're holding to your chest and lean back a little bit and we're gonna do it one more time we're gonna reach out reach 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 and then go ahead and pull that your chest in. Ah. That was a good reach. Now we're going to do a little side bending. This is where I might not do one side, the side where I broke my leg. Um, well, I'll start with the other side so you can see what we're doing. Go ahead and hold on to your chair with one hand, and the other hand, you're going to turn the palm out. And sweep it up on an inhale. Let's just look at where we're going first before I before I go to the side. So just notice where your where your hand goes. You can get that shoulder moving. Everyone seems to be doing well. Because what you don't want is like your whole body to get your shoulder up. You want the shoulder to see where your shoulder range is. See if you can get it up there without clicking or bending in. So that everyone looks like they're pretty good. Really reach up, up, up. And then go ahead and lean into that hand on the chair and reach up and over. So we're not going forward at all. So the inside of your elbow is going to rub against your earlobe. Go up and then over. You can see if you can press that left sit bone back down into the chair while you're reaching out to the left fingertips. And if it's comfortable for your neck, you can look up at the fingertips. If it's not, just look forward. And then bring that back around. Big eyes, the arm comes down. Ah, how's that? I feel so um, imbalanced now. This side feels much longer. So we'll see, I'm, I'll stretch the other side a little bit, but it probably won't get very far. So let's go ahead and put the other hand on the side here and turn that opposite palm out. We're gonna sweep it up. Let's just notice, first of all, where you, you know, where you get to with your shoulder. I feel that rib. And then reach up, up, up. And then over to the opposite side and press that same hip back into the chair. And let that come down. <sighs> now it feels a little better, feel a little more even. Let's go back to um reaching our legs out. We'll reach both, both legs out and then you're going to separate them so you're sort of a wide stance. And if that feels uncomfortable, like you're going to slip out of your chair, go ahead and bend one knee for, and use that leg for support. 
And you want to keep both. You're going to hold on to the back of your, the seat of your chair, and we're going to lift up out of our hips and hinge forward. And you should feel that lengthening on the inside of your thighs. If you have a block and want to put it in and support yourself, that way you can do that in the center. We're going to keep a nice straight back. You're reaching out through your heels and out through the crown of your head. So you're feeling that lengthening on the inside of your thighs, the underside of your thighs, and maybe a little bit in the upper back. If you're feeling it in your lower back, come up a little bit. Or make your, um, your feet bring them in a little bit closer. And come back, back up to seated, and we're just gonna hold on to one side. Let your hands slide down that one leg and to reach over towards that leg and you just get that inside of that fat a little more than the other one. And then come back up. And we're going to switch to the other side. So hold on with the opposite hand and sweep that same arm down towards your ankle. Feel that lengthening in that, in that leg. And then come on back up. Any of these seated stretches that can be done, like I said, you know, while you're watching TV. And I don't like to say that, you know, yoga can be done while watching TV because yoga is more about bringing your awareness to. So if you're watching something boring or during a commercial, um, take that moment to you know, go inside and see what's going on and, and, and be with that stretch. Um, but it, it, I think for me, it helps to do it throughout the day because, you know, after the hour, I feel great, but then, you know, I get creaky again. And so as I'm doing stuff throughout the day, I bring my awareness to what needs a little lengthening now and then, um, that actually helps, you know, helps get through the day. So we're going to do some standing. Anything we do standing can be done seated if you're feeling like you want to stay in the chair, that's fine. But to stand, I'll go through the, the no hands on the chair stand. So we're going to um, bring your sit bones to the edge of the seat. And you're going to tuck your ankles behind your knees. If you had a, something on the floor as a, to lay, raise your legs up like blocks or a towel, go ahead and slip that away. And then we're going to hinge forward, get your nose over your toes. And bring your arms up and ahead, and as though you're going to do the breaststroke, you're going to just going to shift our feet, weight to our feet, and as though you're doing the breaststroke, reach out and push away from the floor and come on up. Ah, that's always a good one. So let's bring our um, let's bring our chair to the front of the mat. And Make sure all four legs are on the mat because um, you don't want anybody, it, it makes it not slip that way. <clears throat> and just a little, little mat fact. Um, people often ask me this in class, which side of the mat is, um, is the stickiest? So you got like the sort of smooth side, you got the side with the ripples. So you want the ripple side, the, to be on the floor because that's going to be more um, more stable. So that was a little fun mat. And then you all four legs of the chair on the or on the mat. That's what that was you see. Okay, so sit you right behind your chair and make sure that's nice and sturdy and. You can also use a wall if that's um, if you have a wall handy. Um, so nice and close to your chair. We're gonna separate our feet about hip width apart, maybe a little more, and just shift your weight from one leg to the other leg. And you can use the chair. So if you're seated, you can shift from one sit bone to the other sit bone. We're just shifting our weight, as much weight as you can. And then go all, 
Use the cheer for swords. See how far you can go. Like, oh, until you just been following her. I said, oh, yeah, there's my, there's my limit. And then I'm going to go to the other side and find out where that is. And then come back and it's actually a good balance exercise. See how far you can go. And let that go. Let's go ahead and you can hold on with one hand for support if you want and let one arm swing as we to shift our weight from side to side. If you're going to let both arms swing, that's great. And not necessary, but it gives you a chance for them to just be floppy and so you give yourself a massage. Kind of whack in the, in the hips and the... And if you're seated, you can go ahead and do that same motion. You're shifting your weight from side to side and letting your arms just be floppy. And let that go. If you were, if you widen your stance, bring them back to their hip width apart. We're just going to go up and down on our toes. So if you're seated, you, you can just sort of bring your heels up and down. Or we're going up and down on our toes. And let that go. So this is also what you do when you're waiting, you know, you're like waiting for a pot to boil. Waiting for the pasta to be done. You can just be doing some up and down on your toes. <clears throat> I have a countertop that we just rented in our kitchen and we made the countertop overhanging by an extra inch or so so that we could router a finger hold underneath. And I can, so I can hold on anywhere. I can do yoga anywhere in my kitchen because I can hold on to the... If you're renovating your kitchen, it's a great idea. Because you know how we tend to fall back have a handholds all over the kitchen, just to the edge of the counter and, the, and all around the island. And you can't see it, it's underneath. So it doesn't look like welcome to my handicap house. So, a little fun fact. So let's go ahead and stand up nice and tall. And just bend at the ankles and knees. You can make sure the ankles and are bendy. And then let that come as stillness and just see if you can get your weight even on both feet because we tend to lean one side or the other. Notice it, your feet, sort of the ball of your big ball, big toe ball and the little toe ball. So if you can sort of balance between those two and the outside and inside of your heels. Because it's almost like you've got four points that you're noticing on each foot. And Get nice and balanced. And then this, we're gonna let that exhale that out. We're gonna bring our arms out into a T. If your shoulders crept up, let them fall away. And an inhale, you turn the right palm up. Exhale and switch, just like we were doing in the beginning. Just bring our awareness to what it is to stand nice and tall and Focus on the wrist. So we're going to inhale, switch them again. Now one more time. And then turn so both palms are facing up. Inhale them all the way up. Reach, 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 reach. Interlace your fingers with the index fingers point up. So you're like in a little temple with your hands. And we're going to Reach up and then exhale and sweep those fingers to the right as your hips go to the left. So you're making a sort of a banana out of yourself. Inhale back up and if that's too, if that takes too much, you can hold on with one hand. We're going to reach up again, reach, 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 reach. And then shift those fingers over to the left as the hips go to the right. And if there's any shoulder pain in that, let that arm just come down and just let the, go ahead and let your left hand slide down your thigh and you know get that side stretch that way if it, there's shoulder pain. <clears throat> and come on back up and <clears throat> we do another standing um, balance 
exercise. Clear any blocks or anything out of your space so you can have room to move. We're going to start their feet just sort of hip width apart. We're going to reach our hands out into a T and then as we reach out, we might need a wider stance in here. Balance is in so great. So we're going we're gonna to reach out and then step the right foot to the right and then bring your hands down and clap. And then we're going to reach out again and bring the left to meet the right. And bring your hands down and clap. And then we're going to go to the left side and one more time to the left. So it's a, it's a reach out, step, clap. And then we'll just go to the other side. Then we're gonna reach out and step the other way and clap. So it's, it takes a little coordination, but we reach out, step, clap, and bring your leg in. You're gonna reach the other side, step and clap. And shake that out. Another balance one we can do is let your feet be in, there's other in cross country ski track. So one's in front of them. I'm, I'm going to keep my left in the front and the right's in back. And if you need, if you can have the chair or the wall to balance on. If you're seated, you can go ahead and sit one foot in front of, in front of the other. Your big toes are parallel. I'm going to reach your hands out, diagonally, one in back and one in front. So we're going to start with the, the back, the my right leg is back, so the right hand is back. I'm going to sweep that right hand up to me to the left. And I'm going to sweep it across. And then I'm going to bring the left hand back. And then I'm going to bring that left hand forward, sweep across. And then the right hand drops and goes back. And then bring that together and we're gonna switch feet. Now my right foot is forward and my left foot is back. And so I'm gonna start with my left arm back and my right arm in this diagonal reach. So I'm gonna bring the, my left arm up to the right. And then I'm gonna sweep them across. And then I'm gonna that right arm back. And then sweep the right. So, so I'm keeping my weight pretty even on my feet when I'm in when I'm in the reach. But then when I pull it forward and switch, I'm going to have a little more weight on the front. And then when my arm sweeps back, it's I put a little more weight evenly again on both feet. And let's go ahead and let that. Now we'll come back to center. So bring. If you're standing, bring your bring yourself nice and close to the chair. If you're seated, if you have another chair or a counter or a, a bureau, you can reach out towards. We're gonna we're just gonna lengthen the back, and this is something you can do seated or standing, you know, through all throughout your house. So you're gonna step one foot back, the other goes to meet it. Let your heels drop down, and we're going to hinge at the hips and push that tailbone back. So if you see it, you can reach out towards the chair or the counter. And this is perfect on like the kitchen counter or the bathroom counter. And you're just going to let those, and you can use the back of a chair or the back of the sofa if you're seated. And you're going to just let those arms be just sort of propped on the chair or the counter. Ideally, you want them about hip width, um, shoulder width apart. And you want you want to reach that tailbone if you're seated. Tailbone's reaching sort of towards the back of your chair. If you're standing, it's reaching towards the wall behind you. And then you can inhale and bring one foot forward and then the other, and come on back up. So the way you want your shoulders, because it's a it's a big shoulder stretch, and it's one that oftentimes yoga teachers are the worst at, at not getting 
their shoulders align right and then they hurt themselves. So we don't, we don't do any of that stretch so much that we're gonna injure our shoulders. So one way to feel how the shoulders are supposed to feel is you have your, have your hands, palms facing each other and sweep them up. And then turn your palms forward. And so notice where your shoulders are here. And then bring, bring your hands down to your chair or, or something, whatever you're pressing in. And th that's how your shoulders should feel when you step back. So they're, so that you're not overextending it until you get that position in those shoulders. And when they're up, sort of notice, reach up with your fingertips, but see if you can get your shoulder blades to sort of slide down your back. So you're sort of engaging your shoulder blades while you're reaching up. And then, and then keep your shoulder blades in, engaged and bring your arms back down. That's where your shoulders want to be when you step back into that half dog so that you're not doing any overstretching to your shoulders. And then come back up. Let's go ahead and come back into our chairs if we're standing. And the way we do this without collapsing in our arms is you can reach out and counterbalance as you bring your sit bones back down. If you want to challenge, you can cross your arms and try that. This is one you can do throughout the day. You know, you're sitting in the kitchen and just do a few of these. You know, do three or four after you've had your coffee. And then, then you, you can, you're engaging your thighs. So you want to hinge for your, your, the key is being close to the front edge of your seat. Your ankles behind your knees and pushing away from the floor. And so if you don't have stairs in your house, to keep those um, quads engaged. I used to live in a three-story house and now I live in a ranch. So I actually find stairs to climb because um, it's good to keep your legs in, keep those thighs in shape. And when you go to, when you go to sit down, make sure you're not, if you really want to challenge yourself, Go to sit down and right before then come back up. That's gonna that's gonna get those thighs working. And if you're cold, it'll warm you up. How's everybody feeling? So we'll do just um uh, I know we're going over, but I we started late, so I'm hoping that's okay. Um so let's go ahead and we're still at the edge of our seat. Do a few cool downs because we, we've been working kind of hard. So we're gonna take a nice breath in, exhale out like the shoulders drop. Sorry, sorry to disturb you, Renee, but um, I think somebody else needs this. Uh, oh, okay. Um, let's just close in.